Thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to try and close the session, um, and I'm going to try and do that a couple of times. I'm an outsider to the banking industry, but I'm a technologist at heart, and it was really interesting to hear the discussions of this morning. And I had a little bit of a, a strange feeling this moment, and, and I had a little bit of an, an, an Amal Alamuddin feeling. Um, I don't know if you know who um, she is. Do, do you know who Amal Alamuddin is? Yeah, who is it? George Clooney's fiance, yeah. Actually, wife, because they got <laughs> married um, this weekend in Venice. And I, I know most of you actually flew in from Venice to come to this event, so it was a nightmare getting here. But it was an interesting discussion in the uh, newspapers this morning, um, because most newspapers actually had the heading, George Clooney uh, married a lawyer. And there was a very interesting discussion, because um, a lot of people reacted to that and said, this is completely wrong. The right headline should have been that one of the most highest profile leading human rights barristers in the world, an activist, um, a leading top seller author, and one of the top global lawyers married an actor. <laughs> and, um, and uh, absolutely. And I think that's exactly how I felt about some of the discussions we had this morning. Because although I really appreciate the fact that Gottfried was here, this whole discussion about, you know, should banks or should SWIFT adopt or engage or embrace cryptocurrencies is exactly an Amal Alamudin moment. I think it's exactly the other way around. I don't think there is no way that you can actually think about should we adopt it. I think this is happening. And I think maybe the shoe is completely on the other foot. I'm a technologist, I've been in telecom for a very long time, and it reminds me completely, I think it was Chris Skinner who said this this morning, about what happened when TCPIP came on board. It's exactly the same. I mean, I was in the telecom industry when the dominant platform and protocol was ATM, not your ATM, but the telecom ATM, a synchronous transfer mode. And all these big telco players like Alcatel, Lucent, et cetera, were building big stuff to run on ATM. And I was this little nerd in the basement, you know, discovering World Wide Web on TCPIP. And I remember my boss coming into my office and saying, you got to stop working on this thing because it will never fly. We've already adopted a standard, and it's ATM. You know, this whole worldwide web thing is not going to take off. And that's the moment that I quit my job and became an entrepreneur. But if you look at TCPIP, the reason the telcos hated TCPIP is nobody really designed it to do this stuff. Nobody was in charge. There was no boss. And I think this is exactly what we're seeing here. The reason why so many people in this audience feel weird about cryptocurrencies is because the banks didn't invent it. It's something that just came up. And just like TCP IP is being used for a lot of things, it was never designed for. You still have people in this world who think the web was a horrible idea. You still have people in the world who think the internet is completely the dumbest thing we've ever done as humanity because there are a lot of pictures of cats on the internet because YouTube is full of cats and actually one of the most popular people on Twitter is Grumpy Cat who has millions of followers. But I think that is besides the point. The fact that we're living through something that is revolutionary, that didn't come from the banks, is really scary for you. And to close off, when you look about regulatory, you know, there is an industry very close to how you think about regulatory healthcare that is going through the same transition at this moment. One of my favorite companies in the world is 23andMe. It's a magnificent company where you can basically have your DNA profile analyzed. You spit into a test tube, and this is one of the hardest things I've ever done. It took me more than half an hour to fill an entire test tube with saliva. But after you do that, you send it in, and three weeks later, they give you a complete DNA profile, and they tell you what your history is, what your current situation is, and what your likelihood to get diseases is at a certain moment in time. That is one of the scariest things in the world. 1.2 million Americans have done that, and in December of last year, they got a letter from the FDA saying their product is illegal. And when you ask the FDA why, it's not because of the quality of the test. The quality of the DNA analysis is perfect. But FDA said the world isn't ready for people to have access to this kind of technology yet. 
They closed down the shop because the FDA said, if we give people access to their DNA profile, this is going to disrupt the entire healthcare insurance business, and this is not what we want to do. What is now capable, you can still do the test, you can download your complete DNA profile on a memory stick, you upload this onto a server in Nicaragua, and you still get the same results. So the only thing the FDA has done is they have actually pushed this into the illegal circuit. Regulators today, I think, are having a completely wrong approach. And if you talk to the people at 23andMe, what is beautiful there is they said, this is for us an opportunity to actually help the regulators. This is an opportunity maybe to educate the regulators. And I think we haven't seen the end of the discussion. I think it's just the beginning. So I think a good start. We were scanned for our heat this morning when you came. You remember, you saw that when we came in? We scanned for metal and then for heat, just to see if you weren't carrying any dangerous viruses. But I think it's clearly established the big heat that's being picked up is here in InnoTribe. <laughs> see you this afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs>